Hey guys, how are you doing? It's um, Live Chess World League, uh, Galicia versus Algeria, Team Algeria today. Games starting in three minutes. Let me join. Um, I'm board number uh, three, it looks like. Uh, Algeria has six boards and we have many boards. Mm. According to the ratings, it's going to be a tight match. We will see. So tired lately. I didn't play any chess lately, so uh, I don't expect my my chess to be particularly good. Uh, but it it will probably be fresh, at least. Those are the good news. Chess might be fresh because I basically didn't play any chess for like a week. One game here and there, but yeah. So we'll see. Starting in 30 seconds. Two games, five plus two, and that's it. Let's go. <coughs> Six boards, it looks like. I'm black in the first game. I'll play uh, I'll play Scandi this time. My opponent is not very high rated for some reason. I think I was being paired with a 2000 anyway. Hey Armistead, what is up? So in the end, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six boards. Ah, because ah, Daik joined in the last second. Okay, okay, that's the reason. Uh, how are you doing, Armistead? Where are you, and how are things going there? <coughs> so, so far, we're in main theory here. So I'm feeling comfortable for the moment. Fito, what are you doing, Fito? Bishop d3 is weird. I'm going to go with bishop g4. You're well. That's good. Are you at home? So why can't I just take the free pawn? I think I will take the free pawn. It's usually better when the bishop is on c4, but with the bishop on on d3 I think it works because of course bishop e3 would be answered by queen g4 checkmate in the queen forcing the, the queen trade and I'm a pawn up you're isolated okay um, where are you by the way if you want to share uh, 
Um, here in Spain, it's been a whole week of lockdown already. I mean, bishop pair plus <laughs> weak pawn, I, I will not think twice, even though I'm neglecting a bit of development. Now I need to be a bit precise, I don't want to hang. <laughs> St. Petersburg, okay. Russia. <laughs> but you don't say Russia, right? You say Razia. <laughs> Petal in Russian. Hey, Sakuho, what is up? Okay, so I thought knight here, then he might move this to try and play bishop d6, uh, knight d6. Um, but I think I'm fine. If knight g5, I have knight f6 at the very least. Also, if the knight moves, bishop c5 will be an idea sooner or later. Okay, so knight c5 is possible. I might be the simplest. I think I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, looks very simple to me. Except I missed that. I guess I still can do f6, but yeah, I I, I shouldn't. I should have not missed this. Um, because now I need to calculate, which I didn't want to. I can play f5. F5 before takes takes and kings and F5 is probably better than F6. Ah, should have I shouldn't have done this. So before I have H6 also. H6 much better than Knight takes D3, right? Whoa, didn't expect that. So if I play H6, he can sack the Knight on E6. If he's going to sack the knight, it's better bishop e7 than h6, right? Trying not to fall down to 1300 again. <laughs> hey, Paradej. You can learn all the dirty tricks from Pepe so you never fall below 1700. <laughs> I thought the title said on lag.com. And this is lag.com, right? Title wrong. Yeah, lag.com. Ah, you thought it was really saying that. Okay. Isn't this a pawn for me? But then I would like to castle, and after that move, I will not be able to castle either side. So, interesting call there. And if I castle now, he takes on f5. Well, I guess life is tough. I will not castle. If I take bishop c4, b5, bishop a2, bishop f6. <sighs> pong is a pong. Uh, this is a very risky idea. I mean, I don't think it's like really, really risky. In, in in the sense that, uh, I mean, if he plays b4, let's go with b5 first. I mean, I don't think I'm going to be checkmated here, but it's just not ideal. So bishop a2, I'm expecting, ah, no, so he, he, he keeps no pressure on e6. That way I can just play bishop f6 and castle, right? Had he kept the pressure before, we would have one upon. So that's what I was sort of worried about. Here I can just castle. Although I might decide to do something else like rook d8. Castle before wins a pong. I mean, I could take on b2, right? Again, a pong is a pong, and this, this is just preventing before. What can be better than that? That I thought I had bishop d6, but then c6 is hanging. So, yeah, keep making things messy. I think maybe it's time to just sort of bail out and castle because 
and three points up. I don't mind giving up, giving some pawn back, trading all the stuff. Um, I have this fork here, so he's not threatening. He's not really threatening anything as an e6. If I play e5, e5. But where is this knight going? At a4. Let's defend b5. Shall I? Because bishop takes b5 was a problem. And that I think I will just trade everything. What's the best? Yeah, I don't know, maybe taking on, on a3 was better. We'll see. For the moment, I like uh, I like the chances I have against that bishop. So rook f2, rook takes e4. Yeah, I don't know. Let's do this. Although now the bishop has more squares. I don't think there's a problem in allowing rook e8. <clears throat> I think I will eventually blunder uh, something here. My clock. I will blunder my clock. What is he doing? Oh, yeah, I see what he's, what, what he's doing. How do I get to the map? Oh, you tell me where you are, and I, I can add you to the map. Eighteen seconds left. It's not ideal. Rookie five, please. That map, the PC online map. Mm, to play fast. Yeah. Rookie six. Rookie six. Shit, I have to go to G seven. Hmm. Well, I didn't really have to. Not sure what I'm doing here, to be honest. Not sure what he's doing now. Whoa, I missed that. Shit. Now this is a draw.
let's secure the draw <laughs> or not my goodness <sighs> I've been overplayed again by a lower rated opponent this is not great I think he could do it. I think he could go rook h5. But if he believes he cannot, <laughs> then, then it's good. Because if he repeats again, it's a draw immediately. Mm, need to be careful. Eleven seconds. How did the time go down so fast? <sighs> Rookie three, I think we repeat position. Oh, he goes that way, okay. I'll ping you. Now if G3 or G4 I have the check, so he prevents it, but I can take. It's an immediate draw. Rook B3, or that. If King F4 I take the pawn. In there, I keep the rook. I think he's going for the draw now because, yeah. How's the match going, by the way? No, he's not. No results yet?
we're winning. Did I blunder? Or do I have the usual construction? No, I don't. I blundered. I blundered, guys. I'm going to lose this end game. How can this guy be 1200 in rapid? Makes no sense at all. So Gambit with H4 <clears throat> or take on D4. Hmm. Why would he remove the squares for his knight? What?
this class. Why is this guy so good? I think he's trolling me. He plays the opening like taking risks, like he was a bad player and then he plays so accurate. Or maybe I'm just tilting. And he plays fast. Accurate and fast. Rookie 2, I think it doesn't work for him, but maybe I'm wrong. <coughs> so knight h3. Mm. Maybe it does work. Whoa, you didn't see that. I think he over pushed in this game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we won the match. Thank God. <laughs> um, yeah, that first game was so wrong. So, in board number one, um, 
draw and a wing, board number two a wing and a loss, board number three a draw and a wing, pretty solid team. <laughs> board number four, that's me, a wing and a loss or a loss and a wing. Same in board number five. And Fido, Fido won both, both of his games. Let's have a look at Fido's games. He was black here. Going for an early queen trade. Uh, here, if you take with the knight, you lose this pawn, so that's why he traded queens probably to e5 is a bad move to get white, you know, to displace the king, misplace the king. This kind of position when you're attacking the knight, there's another knight here in this diagonal, e5 is always a bad move, and my automatic response would be bishop takes knight. Ruining the pawn structure, then I can attack this pawn later. And the idea is if pawn takes f6, you can take with the bishop and you win a pawn. Knight e7 immediately is good, but this, this knight is alive and a bit strong there. I guess there's no problem anyway. Oh! So here. Knight d3 was already av available. Knight d3 with the idea to attack the bishop. This is actually a fork. It's a fork to the bishop and to the idea of bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes f2. Check. Winning either the bishop on e4 or the exchange on h1. So I think knight d3 already grabbed material here. But after rook d8, <laughs> king e1 is the worst move ever. And I think you, you need to, to do this. You need to trap this knight on b2. Knight takes b2, king c2, and pray. But yeah, now the knight can go back easily. So it looks like a very pleasant game for Fido. And here, bishop d3 looks like probably winning material. That's also good. This looks like a checkmate incoming. If king g1, rook d1 is checkmate, and if knight g2, at the very least you can double rooks threatening. That that would be a can I move? Can I make moves? Yeah. So <laughs> I can show my analysis. This looks like checkmate to me. This is checkmate. And the other legal move here, knight g2. You can go here, and he cannot take this knight because of the checkmate on g2. This is a very beautiful, very aesthetically pleasing checkmate. So I would have taken with the rook, I think. Taking with the knight has many, many threats, so it's also good. It's just not a, a mate net anymore, although after rook g1, <laughs> there could be a checkmate net, maybe with bishop h4 ideas. Knight page is, is also good. King g3. And it looks like either he lost on time or he resigned here. Um, starting with bishop here looks also interesting. But I guess rook g2. Hmm. Anyway, that was a very pleasant game for Fido. Uh, let's see his second game. So he was white this time, d4, d5, c4, takes, e4. We have a we have a queen's gambit accepted, followed by this nice e6 ugly move, d5 immediately. Mm. Maybe I would consider bishop e3. Just you know, try to take this pawn without compromising the center yet. The problem with knight f3 is probably bishop g4 and then you need to start calculating. That's why I say bishop e3. Um, but after d5, yeah, you're sort of forced to play f4 if you want to take this pawn. And even there, you allow this knight d3 move, which 
actually happened in the game. And yeah, you regain the pawn, but you lost the bishop first. So yeah, I think it was maybe better the other the other idea because here, I mean, given the level of the opponent, you're going to win anyway. But losing, giving the bishop pair to black in a position where we're overextended, the position is going to be opened in the near future. A6 happens there. Check. Okay, bishops, that's good. If I was black, I would have taken here. I don't know. Maybe. And after rook takes d5, maybe queen c8. Oh, I can put moves. If rook takes d5, which might not be the only move, maybe a 5, I don't know. If rook takes d5. Hey, Bush, what's up? This, wing, this queen cannot win a tempo. So queen e7 would be one move. I was considering queen c8, trying to use the light squares, this light squares somehow, trying to block white's intentions of going f5. Mr. Lint, how often do I stream? <laughs> I look healthy, thank you, Bush. Yeah, I'm healthy. I'm healthy, actually. Uh, how often do I stream? Well, lately I've been streaming, <laughs> it's a... It's a tough question. I, in the past, I tend, uh, I streamed more or less daily, daily chess. Uh, in the last months, I streamed maybe like two or three times per week of chess. And this week, I'm streaming more or less every night, but not chess. <laughs> I'm coding, uh, except today when we had this match. So yeah, as of chess, I think I will probably do a couple of times a week. At least during the next week. Uh, yeah, I'm Central European time zone. I'm in, in that same time zone and I usually stream... Well, today it's 6 p.m. when we started because that's when the match was... So sometimes the match is decided uh, and I cannot do anything about the time. But when I stream during the week, I tend to stream around 10 p.m., sometimes later. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, we have a Discord when I, where I pu publish the, the, the schedule anyway. So that was a variation that didn't happen, right? What happened was knight g4, which is a bit strange because this knight... Ah, maybe he wants to go to h6, f5. Okay, that could make some sense. But he took now on d5, which is puzzling. Why wouldn't you do it when you could trade pieces? Why would you do it now? When your bishop could be pinned. Yeah. And now he goes knight. It's like mixing plans all the time. Because now if you opened here, I guess... It, would make sense to use it somehow with queen c8. That explains why I never see you. I have to go up earlier for work, so go to bed like 9 p.m. Oh, so now you, you're seeing me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the thing is, during the week I have classes at the school. So I usually can't stream before 9 p.m. <laughs> yeah. So that's tough. But on the weekends, I tend to stream uh, sooner. For instance, on Sundays, on Sundays, I usually do tactics, like a lot of tactics. And I usually do that in the morning, morning slash noon. But I don't think I will have time tomorrow to do that. So I'm sorry in advance. Yeah, so 96 now. Dublin rooks, yeah, now there's a problem in here. Rook e7, queen d3, very well done, Fido, although there's bishop f5 doesn't work. Okay, well, yeah, very well done, very well done. <laughs> Knight g4, oh, that's tricky. King g1. Um, yeah, the other line doesn't work. So... Well done, King G1. 
94 was also possible. Hey, Wernaki. Yeah, I'm doing commentaries on these games because I already finished my games. But we can maybe take a look at uh, the candidates' games. I didn't know, know. I don't know how they finished. <laughs> I mean, I can do maybe. I, I can keep streaming, yeah. But the match is over. We won, yay! So C six, horrible. Oh, were all of them draws? I thought the Caruana game was not boring. They're all artists. Oh, look at this check. It's not useful. <laughs> what is Black doing with... Oh! What? I mean, you could still save the knight. Or give only a pawn, but... That knight is going nowhere from there. I would have gone. I would have gone. I ah, know if you go here, knight a1. Yeah, I would have gone here. Knight a1. Knight d4 probably not working, but knight c1. This knight has no squares before rook a2 coming. It's a trap knight. I don't know. Rook d7, also good. Going for activity, this knight is doing nothing. Yeah, it might be even better from uh, an engine point of view. Knight d4, look at that. Knight takes d4 and he resigns. Yeah. And the Alec and Caruana were winning, and then they blew it away. Oh, really? Also, Caruana still wanting his troll prize for the tourney. <laughs> okay, let's go watch those. This is so beautiful once you learn to see the patterns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where can I see the candidates? No, 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 no. Watch broadcasts. Candidates, round four. Caravana Nippon Yoshi. I can maybe do like this and like that. That's better, right? I don't know. Hey, Ravalanin. Took me a sec to get the artist pun, Wernaki. Oh, was it a pun? Oh, because they draw. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Um, so no e4. Caruana played d4. Knight f6, c4. D6. My computer is being slow for some reason now. Okay, we have a <laughs> Grunfelest, Grun Grunfel by transposition, right? So they finally got into a Grunfeld. Takes, takes, e4, knight takes e3, b takes e3. So I'm not very familiar with the Grunfeld. I studied it, <laughs> but I don't play it a lot, so I'm not familiar. So I always mix the lines. I think I studied. The line I studied more was the bishop e3 line because I had to play once over the board against someone who played that line, so I was sort of preparing against that. But I, I, I have some knowledge on other lines. Go Jan! Grishuk, being a great disciple of Brzezewski, got into extreme time trouble. As usual, as usual, that's what uh, Grishuk lives from. He lives of, of time travel. He's a time travel addict. Like. Okay, no, let's not do a pun there. Bishop e3, b6, queen d2. Yeah, these positions. Mm, I have some friends who play the Grunfeld. I think it's a very valid tool, very combative fighting tool. Anyway, queen d2, bishop e7. 
if you have any questions on the moves, I mean, I, I'm, this, I'm seeing this game for the first time and I don't want to, to comment on each and every move. I like white, but I understand black has a perfect setup as well. Rook c8, rook c1, knight e5, bishop retires. You would play queen a4 because why not? <laughs> Position the queen on the side of the board where it only attacks the knight. Well, queen a4 instead of queen d2, I guess. Like, for instance, here, queen a4. Yeah, sometimes it works. I mean, it's not an, uh, it's not a bad idea. You need to be a bit careful that the queen is right now supporting some of your weaknesses. What weaknesses does white have? Mainly c3 and d4, I would say. Of course, a2 is also weakness, but it's a weakness that is really hard to attack. So mainly what black is building pressure against is d4 and potentially c3. For instance, going d5 would be terrible because then c3 suffers. So I think these are the two main weaknesses. And queen d2 makes a lot of sense to bring more rooks while still defending your weaknesses. The moment you go queen a4, yes, you attack the knight, but you need to start being careful. Now d4 is under some pressure, and after a move, let's say, such as bishop d7 solving the problem, black is already threatening to win material because of the trick against your queen. And if you try to solve this, how do you do it? If you move the pawn, then c3 is crying. Your queen, now you want to bring it here to defend everything. <laughs> and yeah, in this position, you actually want to move the queen because if you don't move it, uh, black will have a discover attack. So the queen is actually probably misplaced there on a4. Not an expert in these lines, but that's what I think. Then you sack your bishop with check. Okay, always go for for the threats. Now, I can tell you, bishop takes f7 will, you know, definitely makes the queen a4 move a good move because bishop takes f7 is such a horrible move <laughs> that, that just by comparing them, yes, now queen a4 is perfectly fine. <laughs> Yeah, this just loses a bishop, and uh, basically, I don't see any reason not to take with the rook. And yeah, here I guess after bishop d7, uh, you need to be extremely careful. Extremely careful. Maybe you could afford a move such as bishop b5, still attacking the knight. But even pawn takes pawn because it hits the bishop is an option that black could consider and I don't see how all this construction was good for white. Maybe maybe there are even, even other options to, to consider such as a6. a6 is a funny one but <laughs> I would consider it because uh, we could grab the pawn, yes, but if we decide to grab the piece instead after b5 I don't know who's better and why. Our bishop is hanging if we want to return it, we will have to face uh, um, some problems in this diagonal, not to mention that he might even take with the pawn also, and he regained the piece, and now black has a great position, I, I would say. So bishop b5 maybe, maybe not even working. I mean, if we're forced to take the pawn, and self being ourselves, I can imagine this is lost for, for white. I don't know, knight takes d4, for instance. Yeah, so queen a4 looks like uh, we're asking for trouble with our queen there. But, um, but yeah, it makes a lot of sense when you see black's last move, undefending a piece. Uh, it is a move that definitely should come to mind because if you can like wing a tempo against the knight, to bring a rook to the d file, of course we prefer to have a, a rook than the queen there to have tricks against this queen on d8. But yeah, in this instance, I think it's just a step in the wrong direction. Anyway, let's let's follow the game. Let's see how the masters play this this position. 
So d1 takes, takes. So you have the center, rook there, knight there, bishop d3, queen d7. Queen d7 is sort of preparing a massive trade of, of major pieces where black has a great, decent, uh, Grunfeld-esque endgame with this 2 versus 1 and the compensation for white is not such a big one especially with this Grunfeld bishop alive Whoa! Mr. Lin just subscribed! <laughs> hey, dude! Thank you! Two months, buddy! I appreciate the support Alright, alright <laughs> Thank you, buddy I think I probably have sub 2 for this kind of thing sub 2, yeah, probably Feel free to redeem that perk if you, lo if you like or, or the sub one, of course, you also have access to that um, So let's follow the game to see h4, rar h4 takes, takes Yeah, the massive trade that I was talking about and h5 take take and queen c8 now that's a massive <laughs> massive trade and now h6 so white allows all the trades but in return white achieved bringing the pawn from h2 to h6 which is interesting don't see any reason why that's so bad for uh, for uh, black. But thank you very much. No lesson tonight. Too tired. Yeah. Okay. No worries. I mean, it does not have to be tonight. Of course, you can just tell me if there's a topic you'd like me to to discuss or to prepare. We can do it any other day. Of course, d5. So now there are some some ideas someday maybe of uh, an attack on the dark squares there. e6, trying to break that center. Knight c3, trying to hold it there. Goodbye, bishop pair. Because we want. Okay, goodbye, bishop pair as well. So we have a. Um, Oh, queen b4 is interesting because there are some queen b1 ideas as well. <clears throat> we have queen and bishop versus queen and bishop. Um, this is a very interesting question. Would you trade queens here with white or not? Huh. I think I would prefer to play. You probably notice what I need to improve. Oh, yeah. You would trade Warnaki. You're a draw addict. Well, I mean, if you trade, uh, you're taking some risks. You better play active after that. So you better play for the win. I don't think playing for the draw is easy now. So here's what I think. If this was me, I would be like, no, 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 black wants to draw because, okay, white has, my belief is white has better chances in this position because of the pass pawn and because of the king situation, the dark squares there. With, you know, a slightly more exposed king, even though, you know, it's pretty safe on one way, it has some weaknesses around. So I'd say white is better, and if white is better, <clears throat> black has also a passer. Not yet, not yet. Black has two versus one, but it's not a passer yet. <clears throat> this one is on the fifth rank, it's just three moves away from promoting, so this is the, <laughs> the most dangerous pawn right now. So anyway, my, my point is, if I was uh, playing a bullet game, I would never trade queens here, I would play queen d3 or queen c2 or queen e2 or something like that because uh, trading queens looks like it helps black if we trade queens 
Black's king is no longer in danger. Never, ever. He's not going to be checkmated without queens. On the other hand, white might be a bit, on one hand, a bit overextended. On the other hand, having the worst pawn structure for the endgame. So we better, we better, let's analyze this. We better have a good active plan here. And a good active plan could be to go with the king to b5, actually. But if we, do, if we don't do that, this is very weak and very accessible. So I think this is a risky way of playing for white. Because one of the advantages that white had, I think, it was uh, it's just not there anymore, which was black's weak king. And uh, now I see <laughs> the problems. But maybe we have time to get to b5 because there's no bishop, uh, there's no b5 by black, right? Something like this, maybe. Let's explore this line. Maybe we can prevent that, but I don't think that we need it. So bishop c5, there's bishop f4. Also king c4 comes with a tempo. Uh, that might be important. Uh, I said bishop f4 here. I wasn't sure though. Just hanging, what's going on here? If I go there, he can just take. And at the very least b5 should be a draw. Okay, yeah, just saying that if 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 you don't find um, if you play passively here, like I don't know, let's do a bad move. <laughs> if we do a bad move with white, for instance, such as a4, a4 looks like a bad move. Um, black will come here, and good luck defending this pawn, right? Right now we're not in time. King f1, king e7, king e2, king d6. You have a better bad move. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell me bishop c5. <laughs> king h2. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a better bad move. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was my point. Uh, this is weak. So I think <clears throat> if you trade queens, you need to start running. At the very least, not to lose this pawn. And even there... So it's suspicious how you're gonna keep that pawn because if you defend from, well, if we you imagine your king here and the other king here, f5. If you king on d4, there's bishop c5. If king here, I don't know, maybe b5 someday. Looks like it's really hard to defend. And if we ever have to move this bishop for some reason, then h6 is also weak. <coughs> And Caruana didn't trade queens, and I think that's logical. Also, if you're playing against a strong super grandmaster and you're playing for the wing, as I'm sure Caruana was, <laughs> he, he he will not trade queens unless for a very specific reason. And uh, then queen a3, of course, black wants to trade queens. Queen c2, white doesn't want. Queen a5 hitting the pawn on d5. Queen b3, I guess. Queen d1. Oh. oh, this is clever. Now if queen takes a2, there's d6. I guess. That's very dangerous. Queen e6, d7. Hmm. I don't think there's a perpetual. So bishop d6 blocking. G3, King F8, and now it says Queen F3 question mark, and here in the analysis it says Queen D4 was better. I mean, Queen D4 looks so obvious. <laughs> I guess the problem is 
the queen on h7 is going to be a bit out of play. So maybe black has some perpetual or something. I don't know. So let's follow this line. Here it says king e7. And there's no more analysis. <coughs> there's bishop g5 here, right? Bishop g5, king d7, queen g4, f5. And then you have to go back. And if queen g7, I guess it's an immediate draw or not? Is this an immediate draw? If we take. Like king here check here and I don't think we can afford to play f3 but maybe we can that's the only way out of the draw right can we afford this looks very suspicious but maybe we can check no, we're losing the bishop <laughs> we better promote this pawn otherwise this will be a terrible line we had bishop f2 but this bishop c5 so maybe we don't have time to take on h7. If we don't have time to take on h7, maybe the line is not so clear, and maybe that's the reason why he didn't go for queen d4. I don't know. Queen f3, queen check, king g2, f5, rar, g4. Looks good. Queen b1 was a very good defensive move. It resembles, uh, this was Nipomiachi with, with white. Uh, I just recalled the queen b1 he played against Giri. <laughs> Defending the pawn on e4 in that instance. See what the water animal says. What does the water animal say? Queen e3 with a slight threat of checkmate in 2. Queen e6 followed by bishop g7. <laughs> so queen e4 check, obviously. Stockfish. Okay, no, I will not ask Stockfish, although I think because the game has been analyzed when it says zero here, even though I had it, I have it turned off, I think when it says zero, it's zero. <laughs> Let me go to another place. Yeah, it said plus 0 0.8, so yeah. And I think it makes sense, because there's probably a perpetual or something here. Queen for check, takes, takes, f3. Takes, takes. Yeah, so, as a general rule, with same color bishop, bishops of the same color, uh, in general you want the pawns in the other color so you can attack your opponent's pawns. As white is doing here. But, yeah, it's kind of, some pawns are in the, good co in the right color, some others are not. And the only one that white can really fix is this one, by going f3. There's no way to attack this pawn. Uh, no easy way. Like, that takes a lot of moves. I guess it makes sense to play f3, to also bring the king, if possible, to the center. Because the d5 pawn still has this problem that we had before, that we don't know whether this is a strength or a weakness. <laughs> it's a weak pawn, but it's the closest to promoting. Draft, but without the T, and not beer. Draw. Draw. All right. And we also have this problem here. We'd rather have it on, on H5. This is a weak pawn that can be attacked by black's bishop and black does the same see this is the easiest way to make a draw <laughs> like we had the pawns in the wrong color we move them one step forward each and that's it trade 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 and yeah i think nothing will probably happen until the end of the game Nothing really interesting. Well, the last move was interesting. This king d4 move was interesting. And after bishop d6, I guess they agreed on a draw. This quarantine is badly affecting the quality of my jokes. So this king d4 is, is pretty interesting. Um, 
White is voluntarily giving this pawn with king d4, so it's interesting to analyze what happens if black had taken. I guess d6 might be dangerous, like really dangerous, followed by d7 and any bishop move wins. So here I'm thinking probably king b7. But now this pawn starts being dangerous. Maybe it's nothing. Something like this. King d5, we might distract the king to go king c6. I was thinking maybe here. Um, let's say this. This. This is the kind of Sukhs one we like to see, except h5 is a move. This would all, almost, this is almost a Sukhs one. Like this bishop cannot keep attacking this guy. I mean, he could play bishop g7, but I think the best and easiest is h5 probably, forcing the capture and all the trades. And uh, this has to be a draw. We have, oh, we have table base here and it says only king c5 draws here huh well, that's a tough one well i mean it's not tough because we we want we win the pawn but any other move loses uh -huh. okay that was really far from what happens in the game um so where all the games draws I see they were Wang Hao, Alexeyenko, 41 moves, knight 3 d5, g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, d4, knight 6 castle, castle, c4, c6, knight d2, a5. That's interesting, a5 here. Looks like a Grunfeld to me as well. And Maxim Vashilarav versus Grishuk. 53 moves. They arrived king to king. King versus king. And it was a Spanish. It was a Berlin. Berlin endgame. So it's logical that it was a draw. Dean Lirin versus Anish. It was an Imsu Indian, it looks like. And. Is the game finishing with a blunder? With a one move blunder? Oh no, maybe, no, king d5 is the kind of move just to set the kings in the center, right? <laughs> it's probably not a, not a blunder. Further cement in the fame of the Berlin Wall, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he played g3 actually, this is not an so. It's an insult if he plays knight uh, c3 here, I guess. It, it would transpose, but no, no, no. This is like a Catalan. a5, bishop g2. I guess uh, white might play um, a3 at some point to force the capture on d2. This is sort of transposing to a Tarash, maybe. You like Ding? Honestly, I like, wow, this e3 move was required, right? Are we going to castle? Yes, I guess so. He's not afraid of playing a Catalan. <laughs> Dean is uh, very good. I like all of the players, <laughs> honestly. So let's see how this finished. Uh, here. Yeah, I guess they agreed on a draw here because now in the transmission, there's the move king d5, which could have been just the kings in the center. Oh, not sure. Computer says it's a blunder. Let's see if we see why this would be a blunder. Well, for for one thing, I think king d4 looks normal. Yeah. You had a game yesterday, Wernaki. Do you want to share? Yeah, this position looks completely wrong. A 
the lightning moves, we ended up on a classical Tarash. Nice. Sweet. Oh, plenty of blunders, but fun. Cool. Okay, I should finish the stream, I think. So um, I check who's streaming out there. Oh, look, there are some. There's a Blitz Tilted Arena. Tilted. Titled. <laughs> oh, you're sharing the game. Okay, let's watch your game to finish the stream. Why not? <laughs> and I'm going to see whether I find someone to raid. But my computer is freezing. It's going really slow. All right. So you were white and you played one night of three. Yes, like the Grandmasters. Very well done. G3, going for the Fianchetto. Oh, very well. So far, you're playing very safe. D3 is, well, it would be the King's Indian attack, right? D3. Um, there are several options here. You could play D4. You could play C4. Anna Rudolf is streaming. Yeah, but I don't like, I like raiding, you know, like, I don't have anything against Anna. <laughs> but I like, um, Rating like um, more humble streamers. I'm not saying she's not humble. What I say is small, small streamers. Yeah. Li Hang, Li Hang, you mean Ti Hang? Knight to six, knight to three, bishop e seven. That's a bit of a strange move. Bishop e seven looks very strange. Oh, so Ti Hang is a streaming. Ah, yeah, I could probably see that on the, on my Discord. Who's live now? And exactly, Peshka is live. So, uh, just to criticize your opponent's move. Um, even if you don't like the position of your bishop there, you cannot waste your time like that in the opening. You already put the bishop there, cope with that and keep developing. Just castle here. Or if you're too worried about some things happening there, you could even try a move like d4, but yeah, moving the same piece twice for no reason. Looks very stupid to me. I guess the reason was to overprotect d5, but still. So it takes takes and d4 now <laughs> still doesn't look tarashi well after d4 it looks a bit more tarashi right <laughs> castle and d takes c5 takes bishop g5 and now d4 yeah d4 looks like the move i was thinking whether you had an alternative move here to try and prevent d4 because if we can achieve that if we could prevent this we would have a very good version of the torash right against the isolated pawn but i don't know how to do it maybe we don't have a way There's knight a4, I guess, but it's very concrete. It might work. Because it would prevent, for one move, it would prevent uh, d4. And, and let's see what, what does black do with this bishop. If the bishop goes away, then d4 is no longer a move. 
like if the bishop goes back to d6 or, or e7 we could just play yeah bishop g5 e3 knight d4 and this pawn would be blocked on d5 forever so i guess knight e4 knight e4 is the move i would probably suggest here <laughs> see you army cf so yeah okay so let's see bishop g5 d4 knight Ooh, knight b5 surprises me yeah i guess it's normal so at the first at first glance <laughs> i was considering the move knight e4 and now I'm thinking maybe even bishop takes f6 followed by knight e4. Looks like um, we would have rook c1 in the end and some pressure, right? What I'm saying is bishop f6, queen f6, knight e4. He has to move the queen and defend the bishop. Doesn't really matter. Well, there's no other move because we're covering this square. Queen e7 only move. <laughs> takes takes and here i was saying rook c1 we have some pressure the queen needs to keep this defended so queen b6 and maybe at some point we could consider a, an exchange sacrifice although i doubt it the thing is this pawn still weak it cannot advance so Good chances to pile up on, on the pawn, like for instance queen c2, bring the rook. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's a pretty forcing line. And you could do it, my, my first instinct was to go knight e4 first. Knight e4 also uses uh, more or less the same ideas, like for example, depending on what uh, Black does it could transpose, but the logical would be also you know to unping the the bishop. And now it's a bit of a different story because now if we trade two pieces, the queen lands on f6, not on c5. On c5 is probably more exposed to an idea such as rook c1. So here, if we go for the trades and we trade everything, the queen lands on f6, and unless we have something concrete. Um, I think in the other line we had the rook c1 move, which looked more active. Uh, here we might have some ideas. Oh, I think the database uh, is suggesting b4, <laughs> which is funny. Hmm. Trying to trade the b pawn for the d pawn. Yeah, I think I prefer the bishop f6 line. It's all forcing. And you did knight b5, uh, which is attacking the d4 pawn, so that's good. <laughs> and you're still pinning this guy over here, so you're asking some questions. That's, and that's, uh, that's nice. And your opponent played rook e8. Rook e8 is probably not answering those, those questions very well. you have bishop i mean the rook is in the worst place ever <laughs> the, <coughs> the rook was much better on f8 than on e8 not for strategical reasons because for strategical reasons the rook of course belongs to the open file but for tactical reasons and the tactical reasons is the fork on c7 you put the rook here bishop f6 is a no no brainer boom uh did you do this by the way oh, no you didn't okay <laughs> Because rook e8 was the game, yeah, but you didn't take on f6. I mean, you take on f6, and because of knight c7, because of the rooks, now he has to take with the pawn, which black doesn't want to, but has to. I think this would be a gorgeous position for you now, with the king exposed, with these four weak pawns. Hey, Karmar! How are you doing? How 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 are things going in Germany? I think it's going. The numbers are going crazy there. At least, are you okay? 
So, rook e8, played your opponent. I was thinking queen b6, and if bishop f6, queen b5 could be an option for black to unping, because, yeah, when you have a problem, you need to focus on that problem. <laughs> and I think black has, you know, you're attacking d4, but you're also pinning this knight, so it looks like queen b6 hitting this piece. Sort of solves the problem. You're fine still? Okay, that's good news. So, rook e8, rook c1, attacking the bishop, not bad. And a6. a6. I think now every move is good for you. Trying to stay home as much as possible. Well done, well done, yeah. This is something my, some of my, my students, uh, there's this student, he's uh, 10 years old, I think, or 11, 10 or 11 years old. And he likes to do this. He likes to, when, when you attack a piece, he likes to attack another piece back, but he never calculates. And I'm like, well, if you're doing such a move, you need to calculate because sometimes you're just losing material. So at the very least, with rook takes, black is losing, I would say losing a pawn. I know a2 is hanging out well, but there is the outcome of it is so good for white. Even without a virus, I stay home as much as possible. So it's it isn't such a big challenge. Yeah, well, that uh, almost sort of works for me as well. So I think Rook C1, he must move the bishop. Just move the bishop, man. Especially protect C7. Anyway, takes, takes, takes. Oh, that happened. And now, queen c2. So, queen c2, I'm not fully understanding. Um, Here's the thing, you have a good position here. Your pieces are in good places, right? Your rook is funny, but it's doing good good pressure. Your bishop is spinning the knight. The other bishop is ready to put pressure on b7. Your pieces are fine. And black has some problems, like this ping and this weak pawn, and maybe even this weak pawn, and the rook misplaced. So. I would play actively here. I know there's an analysis here that shows bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, knight g5. I didn't see that. <laughs> Looks pretty interesting. Oh, oh, that's a tactical shot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Without, oh, it's 3-0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. If, if it was me, I would never find. In a 3-0, I would never find this idea that that's the, the analysis is suggesting. That in, in the end, I think there's a fork to the rook with a queen b1 fork on h7 and the rook. But what, uh, what I would do is probably threaten something, like winning a tempo. Like queen b3 is, is the first move that comes to mind. I mean, if I'm able to hit the rook and then bring the other rook to the attack, that would be nice. Maybe even queen b1. But queen c2, I don't... I guess you wanted to keep this guy defended, but yeah, not so active. Anyway, let's just have a look at what the analysis here was suggesting. Uh, this and knight g5. And what is the idea? The idea is this little fork on h7 and a2. I think that's what it is because we don't have... Oh yeah, we have a line here and it's followed by, with rook a7, which makes sense. 
rook a7, queen d3, attacking h7, then g6, forcing g6. So here's the thing, if, if black plays, for instance, h6, we have queen b1. And maybe he saves the rook, I don't know, maybe he can, maybe he can survive here. I, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't probably try to calculate this with with uh, with black. It looks so so dangerous with queen h8 coming. And I don't know if you don't want to allow queen g takes g7. Then you have to go queen g6 here. Yeah, maybe this is not so terrible after all. Hmm. Maybe this is not so great for white. That's a crazy idea, which is bishop takes and then this, so that in this line we have the check on e5. And this is the only move, I guess, bishop e6. And then we resign because <laughs> our queen is trapped. <laughs> hey, I'm good at finding bad moves. Yay. There are many tricks with the knights in this kind of position, so I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something. By the way, after h6 we could also use the same trick, I mean the same tactical idea, the other way, like going with the knight there, so that if he takes we win an exchange with queen b1 check. But here I think he just moves the queen and our knight is trapped. And I don't know, it's going to be hard to justify this knight h7 move. It's interesting, maybe maybe the engine, the whole engine idea is just to provoke uh, weaknesses and go knight a4, I don't know. Yeah, this bishop takes f6, I think it's really hard to to understand and to find in a 3-0, uh, but I would have gone for queen b3, I think. Anyway, queen c2, okay, everything's defended. Bishop g4. Bishop g4. It's hanging everything, right? It's hanging... Rook takes b7. h3, allowing bishop takes f3. Bishop takes f3 happened. Bishop takes f3, logical. Rook a5, your opponent. Your opponent has a bad position, worse pawn structure, uh, fighting against the bishop pairing in open position, and he goes for trades. Now, that's that's when you know you're in good shape. So takes, takes, you can win that pawn on c6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could liquidate here to a winning endgame. Aha, uh -huh, bishop d2. So. You could liquidate here to this endgame, right? Takes, takes, it's all forced. Maybe here there's rook c8, I don't know. Um, no, because of queen a4. Rook c8, queen a4. So he must take your bishop. So you're a pawn up in this endgame. Not just a pawn up, but even with a better pawn structure with all these weaknesses. I can envision a uh, 4 versus 2 endgame or something like that. Let's say black tries to trade as much as possible. Then it would be a... At the very least we have this one. A 3 versus 2. When black has a horrible king. Very, very exposed. Very exposed. It should be winning. Despite being a ver 3 versus 2. 
at the very least. So yeah, liquidating into a pong up endgame, in some lines maybe two pawns up. So bishop d2, uh, knight b4, huh? Probably king, but the c file play requires a lot of calculations. Not really. You're playing. Uh, let's go back there. I think you're playing risk a risk-free position. That's the kind of position I like to play. So we were considering this type of line where everything liquidates to these three versus two. Um, your weakness, you already defended it. F2 is already defended. So you're completely free to, to, to move your rook out. And um, there's nothing to calculate. Black needs to <laughs> save his rook right now. I don't know what could be a logical move. Queen a2 maybe, queen d2 trying to trade queens. Queen d2 looks like a good move to my eyes. Because after the queen trade it's probably a draw. But I don't know, queen g4 check, king must move. And we want something like this, like have this defended to be able to bring the rook out and checkmate our opponent. And I went queen f5 to win a tempo here. Had the king gone to h8, I could do the same to hit f7. So it looks like a very, very pleasant position. Like as long as you have your weakness defended, you can just go for the attack because that king is really weak. Also, the pawn structure <laughs> is horrible. He needs to probably go back with the king or start pushing the pawn and weakening it more. Well, actually on h6 it's defended, but yeah, I mean, what does, uh, what does black play here? It's a really tough situation. And I think it's black the one that has to be precise with the calculations. I think this is risk-free because black has no no attack against your king whatsoever. So I think it's black who needs to calculate can I play rook a2 to try and trade rooks or am I blundering my rook after a series of checks? It, it, it's black who, who has to be <laughs> calculating these things. It's black who can lose material if um, if he plays the wrong move because his king is exposed to checks and some check could be a fork. So rook a2, there's a check in here, there's another check in here. After those checks, depending on where the king goes, there might be more checks and it's black who needs to, before playing a move such as rook a2, be sure that he's not hanging the rook. Black has to play precise chess here, Nesepa. Exactly. I mean, I can imagine. I can imagine there could be a series of checks here that wins that that could win potentially win that rook. I don't think they're they are there. But at the very least, we can do this, and Black needs to think again. <laughs> whether now with the rook on b2, there's a series of checks that could hang the rook and now he needs to, to calculate in a different, on a different diagonal, a black one, and, and that's more risky. For instance, move like this, king g7 already blunders queen e5 check, that's the kind of thing I'm, I'm talking about. Um, so maybe king g8, Check. If king here, there's queen f5, and that's probably losing the rook. There's a king back to g8, queen g4. It's hard to calculate. And, and black needs to calculate all of that before moving rook b2. And once he moves rook b2, then you're free to eventually even trade rooks, and you will have a good endgame or start checking, worst case scenario, you trade rooks. Or even after some checks, if black defends properly, you just, you're just testing black, you're just testing black. If black defends properly and doesn't hang anything, like here, king g8 doesn't lose the rook immediately, check, 
let's say he does not blunder and he goes back here. Now we have the check on e4 instead of f5. <laughs> Black needs to be precise. And for instance, here we're already winning. Aha, we tricked Black here. I tricked myself, I mean. Because after uh, king to a black square, we win the rook. And after king g8, we have queen e8 check. If king g7, we win the rook. So king h7 has to be played, then queen takes f7 check, then king h8, then queen f6 check, winning the rook. So, yeah, black needs to be precise. <laughs> and you can do the checks without even thinking. Because worst case scenario, let's say we, we play a line of checks, black is spending time because he has to be precise. And let's say we don't find something, we can eventually play rook f1. Okay. <laughs> okay, and your king still exposed. So yeah, this is such a pleasant endgame for white. It's like, wow, completely risk-free. I can just gamble in a way that, okay, I'm going to activate my rook. Now you need to calculate whether you're checkmated, whether you're losing the rook. And then at some point I can just go back and defend and say, you're still exposed. I'm gonna take one more minute of your time, please. <laughs> So yeah, this endgame, I would have gone for that. So, of course, in a 3 plus 0 game, it's, it's tough. But in general, the more forcing lines are the first I calculate. And I think I would consider that one, you know, takes, takes, pong up, and I'll be back. But bishop d2, okay, keeping the complexity on the board. And now black places horrible looking move night before so <laughs> why on earth <laughs> why on earth would you ping yourself I don't know why people do that there's you know from all the reasons to ping ourselves <laughs> uh, there are very few there are very few that are actually good like I can imagine I would ping myself when by process of elimination, every other move loses, for example. <laughs> if every other move loses, okay, I, I will ping myself. But, I mean, without a reason, I think this queen has many, 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 many squares to go to. Why on earth would you play knight before here? It makes no sense at all. And queen b1. <laughs> now, why on earth, if your opponent pings <laughs> himself, I like what Ben Feingold says about pings. When when you're pinning an opponent's piece, when you're pinning someone in the on, in the in the floor, <laughs> you call your, your friends to beat them down. Yeah. So here I would play queen b3. I mean queen b3 or queen c4, any of them. Just attack the attack the pin piece, and you're winning a piece. Simple as that. Here you are winning a piece. Because he just pinned him, himself. <laughs> no way to defend this knight. No way. Knight e5, you take the piece by taking on d5. He cannot take with the knight because, as we said, it's pinned. And if he takes with the queen, of course, we take the knight with the queen. And we're a piece up. So. Uh, very strange <laughs> series of events here. Knight before self pinning, queen b1 not uh, punishing it. Queen b6, I'm pinning. Good move, finally. <laughs> King g2, decent. Knight b5, centralizing. Rook e1, looks like a very passive one, but okay. Queen e5. A5 is a bit strange. Queen, queen d6, I mean. Queen f5, I like queen f5. The quality of 1300 in 3-0. I mean, it's not so terrible. I mean, I would expect more uh, more blunders, more... I think it's decent quality game. Before... Knight b6. Knight b6. I guess... He wants to come here. I mean, the move is strange. Queen b5. 
looks logical. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay, your opponent decided that he had too many pieces and <laughs> decided to give an item away. Okay. And you took it. Queen d8 now. And oh, I would have taken the pawn. Probably. Queen back to b5. Queen back to d7. What on earth? Now you trade queens? No. Ah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with queen c4. And I know every move should win here, but I mean, come on. If you really like risk free positions, when you're a piece up, trade queens. In this case, you even win a pawn. And this is a runner. I wouldn't think twice. I wouldn't blink here. Queen takes queen. Come on. Queen c4. Queen back. Time scramble. So you were like pre moving here. I see you, you had 10 seconds here or in the end of the game? Oh, it was there. Yeah, the, the clock changes. So you had 10 seconds here. Okay. I wouldn't use a second for this move. I, I would trade queens without even thinking the consequences. I mean, what? how wrong can the consequences be when we're a piece up? <laughs> queen c4, queen back to d8, queen d3 blocking the bone, queen back to d7. He's trying to flag you, right? With queen d8, queen d7. Yeah. Ahem. <laughs> uh, that was ah you lost some time in the end oh oof da I mean rook d5 was a deep move <laughs> oh and he didn't take it okay so I understand what's going on here you're both trying to flag each other of course we could we could analyze this line, but <laughs> let's not. Uh, queen d8, he took it, he took. Oh no! He lost some time here. Yeah. Uh, this is the kind of position where I would play rook takes, obviously, and pre move my next move. Any move, any move I would pre move because it's very clear what's black's next move but yeah with less than a second i cannot give advice probably it's it's tough i know all right uh that was it that was the stream the match galicia won yay and now i'm going to do some uh, work I guess I'm not sure I uh, hope you have a nice weekend guys uh, thanks for sharing the game and um, I'll see you I will try to stream some chess because I've been neglecting it lately but I have so much work to do so I can't promise I can't promise uh, I will probably stream tonight but coding because I will be coding most surely so yeah see you later bye bye